Yo, what is up guys and welcome back to another episode of Slice of Shonen. I am your host, The Cloudy Crow, and today we will be reacting to the season finale of Call of the Night for real this time. I thought that episode 12 was going to be the last one, but apparently there are 13 episodes this season, so I can't wait to see how they end it off. Are they going to leave us on this massive cliffhanger, or are they going to wrap everything nicely in a neat little bow to send us off as we wait for season 2? But in the last episode, not too, too much happened. We had a couple interactions with Nazuna. We had a couple interactions with, um, I don't remember her name yet, but the other girl that's like a private investigator. And for the first time, Ko actually began to think about the potential downsides of becoming a vampire. And he really needs to ask himself if he wants to do that. So he pretty much has to choose whether he wants to stick with Team Human or if he wants to join Team Vampire because the private investigator, she kind of gave him one final chance to decide which path he wants to go down. Then from there, he's gonna reap what he sows. So I guess we'll just have to see how that plays out in this episode. But if you guys are excited for the episode, make sure to leave a like. We have our fall 2022 anime coming up around the corner, like Chainsaw Man, Spy Family. So if you would like to see my reactions to those, make sure to click that subscribe button so you know exactly whenever I drop a brand new reaction. Action. And lastly, if you'd like to check out my uncut reactions, you can find them over on my Patreon, which you guys can join for as low as $2. But whenever you guys are ready, we'll be starting this episode in... 3, 2, 1, go. Alright. Oh, uh, okay, hold on. I thought it was another, like, you know in the beginning how they show the studios that worked on the anime? I thought there was another, like, I thought that was the logo of another random studio. Oh my god. Not a Sony, it's a Sun with two N's. What was that? That was... What, did she get bored of gaming, or... Does she sense something? I don't know, that was kind of a, like... Sudden, standing up. It didn't look like she closed the game and saved or anything. It's like she just got up and... Maybe sensed that Ko was in danger or something, I have no idea. But... We did... Well, I mean, there's still quite a few vampires that we know very little about. And I highly doubt we're gonna, like, learn about all, what, there's, like, three left, right? Yep, yep, there's the, like, Onesan one, there's the vampire with the red hair, and then there's the vampire that was, like, in the, well, I don't know how to explain it. She has black hair, and she was with the other one that had the black hair at the maid cafe. The one in the blue sweater right there. So, I don't know what we're gonna do with them. But I highly doubt we're going to be able to cram them all into this episode. It's probably just going to focus on mainly Ko and Nazuna as he tries to find his answer to that question that the private investigator left him. But who knows, man? It could go anywhere from here. All right. Ooh, I like this creepy music. Okay, so are we focusing on them? What? Okay, I mean, that girl on the right kind of looks like her. So, are they like relatives? What is going on? Are they like super fans? Wow, that's a uh... dude, these voice actors and actresses are going crazy. She ripped her own hair out, bro. <laughs> Calm down. Hmm. 
I don't care. That is a good question. Yeah, especially since it revolves around love. I wouldn't be surprised. Because you know what they say, love is blind. What? Wait, wow. Whoa! Dude! Uh. Okay. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. I was about to. Dude, I thought I would have had to, like, censor the video or something, but. <laughs> I see what's going on now. I see. So they're just, like. Well, I don't know what they identify as, but they have more of a, like, androgynous appearance. Okay. So it's just, they're just straight up a guy. Okay, okay. But yeah, they definitely gave him that, that kind of look where it's not easy to tell. Like, see, now that I know that he's a guy, I can kind of see it. But she knows what's going to happen, right? Oh, okay. So she knows exactly what they would have done. And she's telling her to stop. Or telling them to stop. Oh, man. Yeah, an apology is not enough. <laughs> but don't lay a finger on Ko. Oh, she said I won't die easily. Dude, this like clickety clacking in the background, it was like screwing with my brain for a second. I didn't know where that was coming from. Oh man. Somebody's about to throw down. Oh, okay, yeah, what's Nazuna's answer? Because we heard Ko's answer. See, at least he's a lot more casual about it than the other vampires are. Oh no. Wow, that's actually interesting. Vampires don't know that much about vampires. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's not like there's any vampires researching their like history and stuff like that. This is actually super interesting. Oh no. Whoa. Okay, so they are playing the- okay! They're playing into their whole androgynous look. Okay. Yeah, and that explains the people in the hallway. But I think- I wouldn't describe that as attracted, they were like obsessed. Oh, that is true. That's how you became one. See? And this is what I really want to know about Nazuna. Who did she fall in love with to become a vampire? Oh, no. Oh, no. Dude, I love this art. That is so sick. Wait, it's already- Okay. I mean- This episode's going by so fast. I didn't think we'd already be at the halfway point. Mm. Oh no, Nazuna is. Alright, let's hear it. Oh, snap! Yeah. He's saying if you want to save her, you know what you gotta do. But see, I don't know, you can't just like instantly make someone fall in love like that. I feel like it's something that takes time. Yeah, that's, that's not the problem with what's going on right now. <laughs> Look, he's all flustered now. <laughs> Interesting proposition. Dang, we're getting pretty philosophical here. That is, that's so true. What does that mean? Oh, oh. Oh, it, 
Is he using like hypnotism or something? He only has one person in his heart. <laughs> I think. <laughs> See, that's the craziest thing, man. He cares so much about Nazuna, but he can't describe how he feels outside of just caring about her. That... What does that say about the other vampires, though? Hmm. Oh my god! Look at these visuals! <laughs> that was some crystal clear water right there. Alright, good luck, Ko. What a fun anime, man. Just a nice jammer going on in the background. And Ko is trying to run to save Nazuna. Oh no. What did you do with her? Ooh. Oh my god, what did they do? No, there's no way they actually beat her up, right? Or maybe they did. Now that she brought up the fact that it was a like an agreement that they had. Alright then. <laughs> I feel like there's something fishy going on here. What the heck? Oh, true! <laughs> this, this is still the same night! I mean, they seem pretty nice, but of course he's trying to get to Nazuna. If they get a hold of him, they'll probably just take- WHAT THE HECK IS HE DOING?! Did he just jump- WHAT?! what? There's no way he just made that. There's no way he stuck that landing without any injuries. My man jumped off of a bridge. Onto concrete! I think it's music, though. Hmm. Nope. Oh, who's this? Oh, that's Nazuna. Those shoes look like something out of Dragon Ball Z, man. Okay, never mind. The shoe the shoes look a lot better up close. Ooh, okay, I like the callback. I like the callback to episode one. And they're even giving him that same like shadow over his face that they gave Nazuna.
Yeah, see, I knew something fishy was going on. She said that Nazuna wouldn't be able to talk. <laughs> yeah, see, that makes sense. Really? Really? That's, <laughs> that's not what the table's saying over there. That's wholesome. Oh, okay, okay. That's the condition. Yeah, pretty much. It's just kind of like they re-inspired Nazuna. Or no, it was actually more of Ko trying to win over Nazuna, and now they're telling her that she needs to try to win him over if she really wants him to live. What? This is so cool, man. Ah, oh, that's sweet. <laughs> like, she doesn't even know what to say to that. She's just, like, stunned. Oh, okay, seal the deal! I'll become a vampire worth falling for. That's so cool, man. What an amazingly well-written episode, dude. That's cool. Whoa, my god! These visuals, man, they're nuts! Dude, a round of applause to everyone that took part in this series. The voice actors and actresses did a phenomenal job. The animation studio, phenomenal job. The writers, I don't know if that would also be the mangaka, amazing job. And also, um, Creepy Nuts for this amazing jammer of an ending and opening that they gave us. And also just the insert music for this anime. All of it has been so good. This is just like, across the board, this anime has knocked so many of the, like, categories out of the park. Like, the animation was gorgeous. The writing, gorgeous. Characters, cool, interesting. They all provide something unique from each other. Instead of having characters that are just kind of there, they all kind of provide something in their own way, which is cool. Even the humans, who are seemingly just normal people, they've all had very interesting interactions throughout this series so far, like Akita, and um, I forget the guy's name, but those two as well. Alright, so that was the end of the episode, and my question of the day for you guys is going to be, what was your favorite episode of this entire season? For me personally, there's two anime, or two episodes that I just, I can't really decide between them. They're both extremely good, and those for me are going to be episode 9 and episode 11. Episode 9 was the episode with Seti, 
where we focused on her her backstory that's when we had the stalker guy that was watching them during karaoke and it started off like the visuals were amazing i think throughout this entire series the visuals from that episode were some of my favorite just when the entire screen turns like pinkish bluish and everyone's colors are warped. I love how it starts off super creepy with the guy that's like kind of stalking them as they do karaoke. You don't know what his deal is. You don't know if he's going to try to kill him or what. And then from there, it starts to get sad once you delve into Seti's past. And then after that, it just becomes super wholesome. You see like the memories of Seti and the guy like going to the movies together and stuff. It was such a great episode. And now that I've explained it all, I think I'm gonna put this one over 11. But I will say that 11 is an honorable mention because that's the episode when we first meet the private investigator. She is so cool. She's one of the coolest characters in this series in my opinion. The way that they brought her in, the visuals that they've done with the smoke and everything, her voice actress, amazing. And in that episode when they reveal the vampire teacher that's been like starving himself for 10 years. The visuals when they first bump into him were so eerie, so ominous, so creepy, like I loved it. You didn't know what that guy was gonna do. So out of the two, I'm gonna pick number nine, but 11 is gonna be my honorable mention. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. But with that, I'm going to head out. Thank you all so much for watching this far into the video. And I will catch you all in the next one. Have a good one.